This guy, I raised him as a puppy. Most of our dogs come to us as adults. So he's been working for um, almost eight years now. And so he's got a ton of scent. He's got over 20 cents, target cents that he's trained to. And he is so happy working. I mean, he's a great, he loves to do anything, but he loves to do detection work. Because there's this huge conservation need um, in Africa right now with poaching, we're training dogs to contribute to conservation by searching vehicles for ivory and rhino and bushmeat. So training dogs on vehicles is new. It's an it's a established law enforcement technique, but for us with conservation, it's a new way to train dogs. So th this is ivory and this is what we're training the dogs on. They're big chunks of ivory that should put off a lot of scent. So my scent with the ivory on it, I'm going to put this in the trunk. What you got? A bowl. Good. Show me. Show me what you got. Good boy. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, Steve. Come on, buddy. Oh, boy. Okay. You can just tell that he, he really loves doing this. Show me. And, Show me. you know, that's how you judge whether a dog's going to work or not. Like, are they happy doing it? Good boy. Good boy. That's a guy. That's what I wanted. He had to actually pinpoint it with his nose before I drew a word. Oh, boy. So these dogs, these two dogs, um, we're, we selected them and are training them to go to Africa and work with an anti-poaching uh, group that works closely with the government of Zambia, and they're trying to stop poaching in, in Zambia. So there's a team of 65 scouts, and they work closely with the Zambian government, like I said. They're armed, they're basically a paramilitary, and they need dogs so they can work on roadblocks and search vehicles for ivory that's you know leaving Zambia and bush meat that's being you know snared and then trafficked outside of Zambia um, as well as inside of Zambia but rhino horn and ivory are so valuable right now that it it's just worth anything to try to smuggle it and sell it and dogs are great at checking quickly they can check a car and tell their scout handler whether there's ivory or rhino or bush meat inside of it so they can do a, a search and then law enforcement takes over so the role of these dogs is to find illegal wildlife traffic and help stop it. So we're gonna put this little rhino in this in this um, in this tractor. I think I'll probably put it in somewhere in the engine. Yeah, so Cooper is nine, and he's always actually been a really big help because he hides the ivory for me, and then I can work without knowing where it is which is really necessary so I'm not always cueing the dogs because I don't know where it is and he just keeps me on track I put it down by the engine a bit so that um, it kind of um, it blends with the uh, oil and all that other scent and kind of touch the car because there's going to be a lot of work with it the, there's going to be a lot of you know activity around around the ivory and smuggling it out of the country so yeah He's on scent, and I can tell because he's very diligent. His tail moves differently. It moves in a circle. I don't know where the ivory is, so I can't help him. But, um, good boy. Good. This has only been out here for maybe 10 minutes or so. And Peppin has never worked on vehicles, um, but it doesn't really matter to him where he works. Okay, when he, he's, he closed his mouth, he's, he's sniffing really um, intently and quietly, which means he's... He's sort of hot on the scent. Oh boy, what you got? Check. Okay, he thinks he found it. I can't see it. Oh, I see it. Okay. It's like heroin for him. You can tell he's shaking. His pupils get super big. That's a boy. That's a good boy. That's a boy. And this is his paycheck. He just gets he gets to tug. This is the happiest time he has. He loves he loves searching. He loves the work part, and then he gets this as a reward. 
the reward for working okay. these dogs is working these dogs. I can't tell you how much joy it brings me just to spend time watching them learn. There's something also incredibly primal about being with an animal and responding to it and helping it get somewhere. Like these dogs, they know that Ivory will bring them a toy. But now it's making that more c complex. Every game is going to be a little harder. Now you have to find ivory in a glove compartment inside a car. Isn't that challenging? And well, that's a puzzle to solve. And once you solve that, there's this, you can tell the dogs are proud of themselves. They get pumped up from the search. But then it's part of this bigger picture where they, they're doing conservation. And they're doing conservation that humans can't do. So there's, like, there's a story within a story within a story and a reward within a reward because these dogs come from shelters. They had really few prospects. And so they get a job, they get to be proud of their work because they truly are happy, happy dogs to do this work. And they get to work for somebody who appreciates what they do and help solve conservation issues. So there's millions of rewards. Good boy. Well, we're going to be working with these the handlers who don't have any dog experience at all. It's a, it's a lot to learn and it takes a long time and so we're committed to really helping these guys learn and work dogs for a long time. You know, we're not just going to go over there and drop dogs off. We're there to train them for a long time and then be there every year to keep them going and increasing their knowledge.